to the place of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to the place of grace where whoever can be healed of whatever. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. I need your oil. Let them know I need your oil. I hope you can't pack it. I hope you pack it. I hope you're packing a praise. I hope you're packing the word of God with you. Stand up and tell somebody, I'm packing today. I'm packing today. Are you packing today? Do you have the word of the Lord? Do you have the oil? Do you have the anointing? Do you have the grace? Do you have the peace of God? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Welcome to the place of grace where whoever can be healed of whatever. I don't know what you're expecting tonight. I hope you came with expectation. I certainly did. I came with expectation. It's a lot going on out there that don't really have nothing to do with us, but it's going on, right? So your expectation should be really high because you are the game changer. You are the one to change the way things are going right now. And it comes just from your praise. Just if you use your praise, which is your weapon, that's what we have to do to change what's going on right here. So I am expecting the glory of the Lord to fill this place. I, I don't know about y'all. Y'all sitting up here saying, yeah, I came with the glory of the Lord. I came packing with the glory of the Lord. You spend time with the Lord at home, right? Don't you spend time with him? So you packing with the glory of the Lord. Touch somebody and say, take some of this glory. Take some of this glory. Take some of this glory. My glory is a little bit different from yours. Take some of this glory. Hallelujah. We are expecting an outpouring tonight. It's, this is not a place where you come and you just sit and you just watch and see who's going to do what, what we're going to sing and all of this. We come because we want to be together in unity and in praise. I don't know what your week was like. My week was a little crooked. I had to kick it every now and then and say, straighten up and act right. That's not how it's going to be. Not, 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 in, not on my watch. You can't act a fool like that on my watch. So I'm going to tell you, my name is Janet Logan, and you're not going to do that to me, okay? The devil is alive today, yesterday, and forevermore. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world, than he that is after us, which he will not get us. We are expecting supernatural healing. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know where you need healing at, but it's in the building today. It's in the building today. And it's in the building for you. I don't know if you've never had a sign or a miracle or a wonder, but it's in the house tonight. There is signs, miracles, and wonders for you tonight. You ought to reach up and grab it. I have a sign. I have a wonder. I have a miracle. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I walk in that anointing. You walk in that anointing. Tell your neighbor, I see you packing. I see you packing. Uh-huh. I see you packing. <laughs> we are thankful as we magnify the name of the Lord. You know, when you come together and you want to magnify the name of the Lord, it is nothing like doing it together. Because it's, it's your worship. It's your worship unto the Lord. And as we have come together to do that, don't, don't look to the left and don't look to the right. Look to him. Look to him. And listen to the words that are coming out of those that are singing to us and singing the songs. Because there is a great reward for these people. Your work is not in vain. Tell them, your work is not in vain. What I do, God is paying me for. He's not my recompense. He has the anointing on my life, Lord. He's opened up doors for me. I am now in a place where I wasn't in last week because I praise him with everything inside of me. With everything inside of me, I praise him. Do you praise him with everything inside of you? Touch your neighbor and tell him, listen, let's do this together. You know, I don't like to do stuff by myself. Tell him, let's do this together. Listen, I take the top and you take the bottom. And we're going to chop it up real good. And then we're going to feed it to the, to the birds, okay? 
Let's do this together. Tell him what part you got because I'm going to take his head off. I always want the head. Let me have the head. You can feed the body to the birds, but let me have the head because he can't see. He can't talk to me. He can't touch me because I got his head under my feet. The devil is a liar today. The devil is a liar yesterday. The devil is a liar tomorrow. Calm down, Jenny. Calm down. Calm down. I'm acting like I'm at home, y'all. I know how to act. I got manners. I know how to act. But when you're dealing with somebody that don't like you for nothing, for no reason, they don't like you for nothing, listen, that's when you get your sachet on, okay? When you know they don't like you, and they ain't nothing but the devil, you get your sachet on, and you walk through the garden like a, the garden belongs to me. The garden belongs to you. So you are anointed for all of this, and there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. Do you realize that? I don't care. I don't care what weapon you try to make. I'm going to discern the weapon before you even finish making the weapon. And by the word of the Lord, it will be dissolved by what I say. Because I can speak to the mountains. I can speak to it and let it do what it needs to do. I wanted you to stand up. Let's get ready for worship. Tell your neighbor, come on and worship with me. I'm so glad you're here. We give God all the praise, all the glory, and all the adoration. We don't need nobody to pump us up. I'm ready to praise him. I'm ready to say thank you. I'm ready to say I love you. I'm ready to say I can't do it without you. I'm ready, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless the Lord. Can you turn to some say, can we bless his holy name? Ask him, can we bless his holy name? Yeah. Can we bless his holy name? Yeah. yeah. All right, let's bless his holy name. Hallelujah. holy name you are the king of kings we bless your holy name for you are god we bless your holy name we bless your holy name you are the king of kings you are the king of kings we bless your
Hallelujah. No one is greater than our God. I said no one is greater than our God. That's a good report. That's a good testimony. You can say it too. No one is greater than our God. Sometimes we got to remind ourselves no one, nothing is greater than our God. So we let his praises rise. We let his glory rise. Hallelujah. Come on, can you clap your hands tonight like this? Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. It's kind of fast, right? Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on, just put your hands together for a moment. Let's say it again from the top. Let the glory of the Lord Rise let the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Rise let the praises of our King. Yeah, yeah. Rise let it rise. Come on, you say let the glory of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Let the praises of our King go by. Yes, Lord. The praises of our King Jesus rise. Come on, choir, you say, let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the praises of our King be seated again. Come on, say it again. Let the glory of Let the glory of the Lord. I want to see the Lord. Let the praises of our King be seated in the Lord. Say, oh, let it rise. Everybody say, oh. To celebrate Jesus, let the glory of the Lord rise. Yeah. You ought to sing it. Let it rise. Let the praises of my King Jesus rise. Yeah. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Oh, yeah. Let the glory of the Lord rise in my heart. Songs and hymns and 
there's a song that it rise our minds that the glory of the Lord let the songs of the Lord rise right now God Joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah, yeah. One more time, let the songs of the Lord sing your song to the King. Right? Yeah, yeah. Let the joy of my King. Yeah, yeah. Oh, everybody say, oh. Let them rise in our spirits tonight. Let them rise. So we agree. We sing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We sing, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now you say, yeah. The songs of the Lord say, Let it rise, say, Let it rise, say, Let it rise, say, Let it personal song, the lyrics that you write in your heart, in your personal prayer time, whatever you need, whatever you want to confess and declare according to the word of God, this is your time to sing your song, your hymn, your spiritual song unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Take advantage of the moment. Take advantage of the moment. Take advantage of the moment. Hey, take advantage of the moment right now. Let the joy rise, let the favor rise, 
Let the glory rise. Let the peace of the Lord rise. Let the victory of Jesus. Let the victory of Jesus.
put your hands together. Bless the Lord, everybody. Come on, do better than that. Let's lift our voices. Father, to you and to you alone, honor and praise are due. There is no God like you in heaven or in earth. Indeed, we declare there is no God but you. Thank you for your goodness to us, for your mercies that are new every morning, for your faithfulness that is great. Thank you for your presence, for we acknowledge that it is your presence that makes the difference. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, into this time of prayer. Grant us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to perceive and to understand what the Spirit of grace is saying to the church. And we declare these things we will speak not in the language which man's wisdom teaches, but in the language which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things to spiritual things. Bless your people, individual by individual, and grant us now as an instrument of war in your hand, we may affect both heaven and earth. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone who agreed with the man of God said it is so. Now say amen. Clap holy hands and bless the Lord again. And then you may be seated in the presence of the Lord and we greet you in the strong name of Jesus reminding you that he is Lord and there is none other beside him and thanking God for each one of you person by person and individual by individual for connecting with us tonight for our prayer force prayer hour our prayer force we call it a first fruits prayer hour because the direction of the spirit of grace to us was that we were to begin to gather on the first day look at your neighbor say the first day the first day on the first day of every month as a type of first fruit on the month there is a principle of first fruit in the scripture the bible says if the first fruit be holy then the lump is holy the principle nudge your neighbor say the principle the principle no, 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 you're not talking strongly enough. Tell them the principle, the prince. Yeah, the principle is that when you separate and dedicate or lift that first of whatever it is to the Lord, there's a blessing on the rest of it. That's why God doesn't ask you for all your money. He just asks for the first and to give him what it is. And he says, if you'll give me that, I'll bless the rest of it cause it to multiply increase grant you all kinds of other things squeeze your neighbor's hand squeeze it tight tell them there is a principle there is a a principle of first things there's a principle of first things in the bible one of the things i teach people or try to teach people all the time you know the bible says moses saw the form of the Lord well God is spirit and so he has no specific form and or shape he came to us the Bible says in the form of man so when the Bible says Moses saw the form of the Lord what does it mean it means that Moses saw God's patterns saw God's structures saw God's principles and the Bible says Moses endured as seeing him who is invisible how do you see an invisible God by working his principles y'all didn't hear what I said by by following his pattern and watching his word come to pass in your life nudge your neighbor and say that was worth the price of admission right there right that, that right there was worth the price of admission yeah and uh, you know if you learn the principles of God there are things that you can see and experience that the nominal Christian, the nominal believer does not. And so our prayer force, uh, first fruit prayer hour is a time of gathering at the direction of the Lord. We're not doing this because we need something else to do. Amen. We're doing it as a part of an assignment that the Spirit of Grace has given to us. And tonight 
even as we go into prayer, you're going to know and understand a bit more about that assignment that is upon us corporately. And if you're connected to this anointing, it is upon you individually. Now, the prayer force, that that, that that name that was given to me some years ago, 2015 actually, the Spirit of the Lord directed me to raise up 15,000 prayer warriors throughout this nation. We did that. That, uh, that number was met and exceeded. Of course, uh, here a few months ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I want you to resurrect that because there is a need right now for the people of God, for the church for the true ecclesia, the true church. You, you understand what I mean when I say ecclesia, right? Ecclesia is the Greek word that is translated uh, uh, from Greek into English, the word church. And see, it's very interesting. That word was not a religious word. Ecclesia, church, was actually a, u, a word that was used in Greece. And it was a, a nomenclature that referred to the representative government of Greece. So the representative government was called the ecclesia. They were the people empowered to make decisions. The people who, when they said something, that's the way the nation went. Y'all aren't hearing me. And this is what Jesus was referring to. He took that term that was used in culture and he said the people who are following me are going to be a divine ecclesia in other words when you bind something it'll be bound y'all aren't hearing me when you loose something it will be loose and that's why god said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and, and turn from their wicked ways hear my voice turn from the wicked ways repent of their sin he said I'll forgive their sin and heal the land so uh, we raised up those intercessors and the objective was that with regularity that group of people would pray uh, with me as the Spirit of God would give me critical matters and or issues uh, in the nation or the nations of the world and to agree with us uh, specifically for a move of the Spirit of God not only in all the nations but specifically and uh, certainly in America. I believe, I believe what the Bible says. I believe the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, not the flawless, but the righteous availeth much. Effectual is a word that we don't use much in modern English. We use the term effective. Um, and effective is a term that is used after a thing occurs effectual is an old english word which literally means product producing see there's a type of prayer that produces a product you see we're not we're not talking about come in the room jesus because he's already in the room that, that 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 doesn't produce a product are you still here so the uh, effectual prayer is prayer that produces prayer that causes things to happen well how do you know that you are praying effectual prayer well we know the scripture says all of the promises are in him yes and in him talk to me where are my bible readers talk to me all of the promises are in him and in him amen do you understand what that means that means when you and i pray the word when you and I pray the word, the promises of God, the answer is yes. Boy, that's, that's powerful. Uh, and, 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 and the only other answer you're going to get is so be it to the yes I just said. That's what amen means. So he says all of the promises are in him. Yes. And if you, if you, if you want to know what I'll say the next time, it'll be so be it. You understand? Touch three people and say pray the word. Pray the word. Pray the word, pray the word. You know, I was raised in that religious system, like some of you, and say, you know, God has three answers to prayer yes, no, and slow. God has one answer to prayer yes. And if you don't get a yes, you didn't pray. Y'all aren't hearing. You, you haven't prayed yet. Or as you're praying, He will change your heart so that you are indeed asking what He wants. 
Oh, goodness. I, I need to teach on prayer again here real soon. So, so it is important that you and I come together in this time. And in each one of these prayer force prayer hours, we go to the Word. We look at some things specifically that the Spirit of the Lord has laid up on us. Now, again, if you're watching me live streaming, and many of you are, we want you to make sure that you connect with us here at the Prayer Force Prayer Hour, and you're a part of this company that God is raising up. And you can go to bishopmcclendon.com, sign up there so that I know uh, that you are connected with us. Now, every single month as I come and do this, I'm going to be speaking to many of you, and many of you, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is going to speak to the Lord said to me you know every time you do this it won't be the same group of people but there'll always be a group of people that will connect with this anointing God has spoken to us to do some very specific things and I'm going to be sharing some of those with you during uh, this vision month the month of February but every time I come I'm going to speak to a number of you and direct you by the Spirit of God to sow a seed once a quarter those of you that sow that seed with me, I'm going to invite you to a very, very special live Zoom call where I'm going to be sharing some things that I do not share in the open forum about things the Spirit of God is directing me to say, to share, and to minister to people who are truly, uh, seriously uh, concerned about standing their place in the spirit realm as watchmen on the wall and so this is a very serious enterprise I told y'all this is wartime do you understand and so this is time to get instructions and to be connected and so I'll share more about that with you all right I want to get to this tonight because I want us to make sure we get the work Done. How many of you have been with us on our consecration? Let me see. Uh, how many of you are glad the consecration ends today? Let me see. Let me see that. Uh, look at your neighbor and tell him you do look just a little slimmer, by the way. Just a little, little slim. As a matter of fact, just ask him, have I seen that outfit lately? Have I? Or did you just get back into that one? by the spirit of the lord amen so we we, we we want you to we want you to to stay in the spirit of consecration even if you're breaking the fast or the consecration some of us may be going a little further here or there but uh, uh, thank god for those of you that connected with us clap your hands and thank god that the consecration has ended no don't don't think of that thank thank god for the results remember many times when you are fasting, when you are in times of prayer and consecration, you see uh, the results of that after the consecration, after the fast is over. So touch three people and say, expect, 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 expect supernatural things. Amen. I want you to turn with me very quickly um, in your Bibles. And in each one of these prayer force prayer hours, one of the things we do is we take you to the Word of God. As I just said, uh, when you pray the Word of God, the Bible said God watches over His Word to perform it. I learned this very early in my walk with God. As a matter of fact, He said it to me. I'll never forget. He said, Son, I, I see your tears and I bottle them, but I cannot move on your tears. He said, Son, I see uh, your tears I hear your holler your cry but I cannot move on your cry I watch over my word to perform and I'll never forget this he said to me he said my spirit will skip over a thousand people crying and screaming to find one man who is speaking my word one woman who is speaking my word and supernatural things will happen did you get that did you get it uh, so one of the things we do here is we take you to the Word of God so not only are you able to pray with us corporately but we desire that you take these scriptures and you take them to your prayer place during the month and continue to stand on the word and what I believe the Spirit of God is saying during the month. Wave at me if you understand what I just said. So I want you, number one, I want you to go to Numbers chapter 7. Numbers chapter 7 and verse number 
10. Numbers chapter 7 and verse number 10 because there are some things on the mind of the Spirit of God right now for the church, for this church and for the church corporately. Now you say, Bishop McClendon, uh, how do you know that? Well, that's one of my responsibilities is to hear the word uh, at the mouth of the Lord. I'll talk to you about that in just a moment and to discern uh, the operatives, the movings uh, of the Spirit of God. I, I say oftentimes I'm amazed that people can believe that natural man can wire apparatus to pull images out of the sky and, and, and transmit them on computers or television monitors or radio waves we have learned how to do that and so a man can wire a woman can wire an apparatus so it can pick up signals and images out of the sky but we don't believe our God can wire men and women so that they can perceive and receive things uh, in the spirit how many of you know God is at least as smart as the smartest person you know yeah and so he knows how to do that and so there are responsibilities among his gifts that he sets in the church to do that and so one of those is the prophetic grace and the prophetic anointing and we move in that look at look at numbers chapter 7 and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 10 now once again one of the things the Spirit of the Lord said to us as we came into 2024 is that this would be a year of dedication uh, he talked to us about a year a season of re-weaponizing and we are dealing with that but we're about to now move more deeply into understanding what this dedication is and I want you to see something in the word look at numbers chapter 7 and verse number 10 because we're about to ask God for something and I uh, and I'm gonna say this the Lord said to me today as I was waiting before him he said tonight I want you to to tell the people that you're coming in the spirit of Psalm uh, uh, 2 verse number 8 in Psalm 2 and verse number 8 Psalm 2 and verse 8 uh, the psalmist writes that God says ask of me and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession I want you to get it God says ask of me and I'll give you in other words he is putting on the heart of the prayer what to pray for what did you get what I just said he's putting on the heart of the prayer what to pray for why because it is on God's mind to do it it's on God's mind to get the heathen it's on God's mind to give his people territory and land but God can't do it unless a man invites him into the earth arena See, God has given man dominion in the earth. Did you hear what I just said? He has given man dominion. And when I say man, I mean male and female. That's man. He has given man dominion in the earth. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, God is in control. Well, yes and no. God is in control where somebody has invited God into the situation by his word nudge your neighbor and say did you get that did you get that see don't go around well the Lord is in control well here's my question has anybody invited the Lord into the situation by his word because if they haven't he's not in control there whatever man or woman whatever spirit is dominating them is the spirit controlling the situation Boy, I, I must try this side because y'all see that, that that's why it's important to have men and women who are sensitive or at least yielded and open to the Spirit of God because when you find people who are not then you're going to be dealing with uh, resisting spirits are you there so so in in Psalm 2 8 the psalmist writes that basically God says ask of me in other words I'm telling you to ask because it's on my mind God says to do this and I need somebody in the earth to invite me into the earth realm to accomplish what I want to accomplish wave at me if you understand what I just said okay so 
Now look at, at, at number 7 and verse number 10. And I don't want to be too long with this, but I need to be thorough because as I said, you know, the Bible says where the axe is sharp, not much force is needed. You see, when you know what you're praying about, you don't have to pray all night. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. When, 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 when the axe is sharp, when the word is the thing you're using, you can pray and know you got an answer. Are you in the room? Okay. And so I want us to pay attention. Look at Numbers chapter 7. Once again, this is the passage that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me concerning when he started talking to me about the season, the year of dedication. Look at number 7, verse 10. It says, Now the leaders offered the dedication offering for the altar. Everybody say, for the altar. Say it again, for the altar when it was anointed. Say that, when it was anointed. So the altar had been constructed, the altar had been built, that was something that God directed, and the altar had to be anointed. Now again, in that hour, the anointing oil that God gave to Moses, according to the art of the apothecary, God gave Moses instructions for what the anointing oil was to be made of. And the, the, the law of Moses was that that anointing oil, God gave Moses the instructions, what it was to be made out of. Moses took it to the apothecary, uh, the equivalent of the pharmacist, and said, this is what we're to make. And the, 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 the law of God was that no oil in Israel was to be made like that oil. So, 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 so there, there were to be no duplicates, no copies, uh, that couldn't be uh, licensed. In other words, God had the patent on it. You understand? And it couldn't be duplicated. Are oh, you understand? So, so whenever the anointing oil hit a thing, the thing was consecrated or dedicated or unique. Why? Because there was nothing else like it. You understand? Uh, and this was God's way of saying, when I anoint a thing, it is unique to me. Y'all aren't hearing. When, when I put the oil on it, it's mine and nobody else can have it. Watch this or have anything like it. Look at your neighbor and say, once the anointing is on you, there's nobody like you. No, you didn't hear what I just said. Look at your neighbor and say, once the anointing of God is on you, there's nobody else exactly like you. So, so, so when the oil, so the oil was on and, and, and offering, now get it, don't miss the principle. Look at your neighbor and say principle, principle. The altar was constructed, the oil was made, but at the time the oil was put on the altar, there had to be an offering from the people. They had to give something of themselves. Nudge your neighbor and say, don't get nervous. He's not receiving an offering right now. It is a principle. God was, in other words, God was saying, you're not going to see the results you want if you don't give me something of yourself. No matter how nice the altar is, no matter how beautiful the oil smells, you're going to have to give me something of you if you want to see results. Wait with me if you understand. All right, so now watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Watch, watch. He said, you shall dedicate. At another time it was dedicated. So the leaders offered their offering before the altar. For the Lord said to Moses, they shall offer their offering. Watch this. One leader each day for the dedication of uh, the altar. Go down to, well, well, let me just, well, let me read a little bit here because I want you to see something. Look at verse number 12. A and the one who offered his offering on the first day was Nashon, the son of Aminadab from the tribe of Judah. And it talks about his offering. Look at verse number 18. On the second day, uh, Nathanael, the son of Zuar, leader of Issachar, presented an offering. So the first two offerings were from praise, uh, was from the tribe of praise and the prophetic tribe. See, the Bible says the sons of Issachar were those men who had understanding of the times and knew what Israel was to do. Are you in the room? 
So watch this. Look at verse number 18. On the second day, it was Nathanael. Look at verse number 24. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, leader of the children of Zebulun, presented an offering. And then in each one, it goes on to say, and his offering was one silver platter, the weight of which was 130 shekels, silver bowls. It goes and talks about what they gave. Look at verse number 30. On the fourth day, Eleazar, the son of Shadur, uh, leader of the children of Reuben. So here's what I want you to see. Every leader of every tribe in Israel had to present an offering in this time or in this season of dedication. Are you still here? Somebody say every leader. N now remember th this word dedication. This word dedication, it has to do with a narrowing or a disciplining. Like I said on Sunday, it's from a root word in Hebrew, kanak, which means to throttle or to choke oneself with a rope. Dedication had to do with restricting yourself. In other words, if you're dedicated to something, then you're saying no to other things because I'm dedicated to this. The word literally means to choke yourself with a rope. It means to restrain yourself. So dedication is one of God's ways of helping you restrain from that which is not for you. And that doesn't just mean evil, even good stuff that's not for you. See, when you're dedicated to certain things, there are certain opportunities that you won't even take because you're dedicated to this. Y'all aren't saying anything to me. See, I'm dedicated to the work of God. You could offer me a multi-million dollar CEO position. I wouldn't have to pray about it. Y'all aren't hearing me. I, I could just say no because I know it's not my assignment wave at me Let's look at somebody say dedication uh, now now if the Lord told me to take it uh, you know and then to put somebody else in it and let them run it then I do that too but you know there's a there, there, but 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 my, my point is I wouldn't have to pray about the opportunity because I've already choked certain things off are you still here by dedication so watch this is every leader of the tribe had to dedicate and bring the dedicated offering now here's what the spirit of the lord said to me he said every tribe he said this year will have to make a dedication or a rededication in other words how many of you know there are tribes in the body of christ you know, there's there's the there's the the word of faith tribe and the worship tribe and the and the, the this tribe and that tribe. We've got tribes. Are you still here? But what the Lord was saying to me now is, no matter what tribe you're in, this is going to be a season of dedication or rededication. Every single believer, the Lord was saying, this is a time and a season where. God says, I am taking inventory, and I literally saw this as I was meditating on this. I saw the Lord like a general walking by his troops and inspecting them. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight, and tell them the general is walking by the troops, and he's inspecting, making sure your stuff is straight, making sure you're ready to go to war making sure you can leave the house and nothing will fall y'all aren't saying anything making sure you are thoroughly supplied for the warfare you have to engage in i feel the holy ghost see a part of this dedication is making sure you're in your place look at your neighbor and tell them don't get out of your place so the Lord said this to me. He said, I want you to ask me for this anointing. See, when, when the place was anointed, I want you to ask me for this anointing upon your place, your places of dedication. Whatever it is in your individual life, whatever you, uh, thank you, Lord, whatever you are to dedicate your time and your attention to this year, we're going to ask God's anointing on that. Are you still here? You understand, once the anointing hits a thing, you know it. Now, here's what the Spirit of the Lord said to me. Don't miss this. He said to me, he said, son, this is going to be important because there are places. Are y'all here? 
There are places that I dedicate. There are places that I consecrate. There are places that I anoint. And the church, especially the 21st century church, we're getting ready to pray about a couple of things. That, especially the 21st century church, we have literally over majored and I said this on New Year's Eve we've over majored in the reality uh, and it is real that the church is not a building it's not a place it's not a location and that is true yet look at your neighbor say yet now I need you to pay attention to what I'm about to say yet the Spirit of the Lord said to me I'm going to remind people that there are certain designated places that I show up Y'all aren't hearing me. There are certain places, God says, that I consecrate. There are areas. There are parcels of land. There are geographic locations, God said, where I choose to do a thing. And anybody who cooperates with me where I have chosen to do a thing is going to get in on a supernatural blessing. Now lay your hands upon yourself and say, there are places where God chooses to land. There are places, thank you, Lord, where God determines to abide. And, 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 and the Lord said, we need to pray that. We need to ask, number one, that we become one of those places. I'm talking about you individually as a temple of the Lord. But then he said, I want you also to ask me that this location would be such a place. Now, you got to get this. I got to take you into the word on this because what I just said is a concept that a lot of people don't really grasp or understand. Look at Deuteronomy 26. Go there to Deuteronomy 26 in verse number 2. Watch this. I got to show you a couple of things. I got to do this fast. Deuteronomy 26 and verse uh, number two, I didn't give this to you, but just follow me. He, he says, then you shall take some of the first of the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. In other words, God said, I'm going to give you something, but I want you to take from what I've given you. Watch this. Uh, you know, the Lord, and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. In other words, God said, there will be places that I choose to make my name abide. Locations. Loca Are y'all here? Are y'all here? This is a picture of your God. Now remember what name means. Name means nature, character, and authority. So if you're at a place where God has chosen to make his name abide, it's a place where his character is demonstrated. It's a place where his authority shows up. Y'all aren't hearing me. His it's a place where his character, his nature, and his authority. Well, what is his nature? Well, he's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a, he's a savior. He's a prosperer. So let me say it real clearly. If people aren't being saved, if they're not getting healed, if they're not getting set free, if the truth is not being declared, that's not a place God is abiding touch three people say I don't need to pray about that just need to get out don't need to pray about that just 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 just, just need to get out go go to Deuteronomy uh, uh, um, 1423 watch this Deuteronomy uh, 1423 I didn't get and you shall eat before the Lord your God you shall eat in other words you shall receive spiritual food you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide are you there i'll never forget i was reading this years ago in deuteronomy 14 and the lord says you shall eat before the lord your god in the place where he chooses to make his name abide the tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil and i thought to, i thought lord how do you eat your tithe you bring you told us to bring the tithe now you're telling us to eat it and he said, son, remember how I set my system up. He said, I set my system up so the people would have property and land. The priesthood had no parcel of land. The tribe of Levi got no inheritance in, in, in Canaan. Canaan was where the priesthood came from. Are y'all here? And the principle, nudge your neighbor, say the principle, the principle. The principle was that God would prosper the people, give them their own land. 
But the Levitical, the priesthood, would stay in the temple and handle the things of the temple so that everything was done properly and the anointing of God would remain there. Are you still here? So when the people brought their tithe, brought their seed, brought that, then the, the, the priest would offer up to the Lord what was supposed to be offered up and whatever was left over, the priest could have. So whenever the people came to the place where God chose to make his name abide and everything was in order, if the ministry came to them, they were eating their tithe because they were eating the result of their worship to God. Y'all aren't hearing me. Things were in order because everything was functioning. So when the, when the priest ministered, when the preacher preached, when the anointing fell, you're eating your tithe. Y'all aren't hearing me. No, you're not hearing me. Every time you come to the house of God and you get a word from God, you just ate your tithe. Every time you come and a word comes to encourage you, you just ate your tithe. When you come to the house of God and somebody gets healed, somebody just ate their tithe. Y'all aren't hearing me. Why? Because the ministry that is coming to you is a product of what you're giving into it. Did you get what I just said? Now watch this. Go to 1 Samuel 24, 24. I want you to see something. 1 Samuel 24, 24. And the Lord told me to do it just this way. 1 Samuel 24, 24. And we're going to get into prayer here in about uh, a little less than 10 minutes. Watch this. 1 Samuel 24, verse number 24. Uh, it, get that up for me if you would please or I'll find it I know it's in the Bible uh, no that's 1 Samuel 24 22 is there no 24 24 am I am I oh, I'm sorry 2 Samuel I can't read on writing 2 Samuel 24 24 put it up 2 Samuel 24 24 my apology 2 Samuel 24 and verse 24 the context here is very significant. Then the king said to Aaronah, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God with that which cost me nothing. Watch this. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings so the Lord heeded the prayers uh, for the land and the plague was withdrawn from Israel. Now that story is also told in 1 Chronicles 21 and you know this is the story Aaron now there is Ornan when David had numbered the children of Israel a plague came David seeks and inquires of the Lord how to stop the plague the prophet of God comes to him and says this is what the Lord says David does it he, he builds an altar there uh, buys the, the field from Ornan buys the utensils buys the stuff and on that location somebody say on that spot on that spot he sacrifices there to the Lord and the plague is stopped right there now why is that important because David when he sacrificed it when he bought that and sacrificed to the Lord there something supernatural happened on that spot now God had planned it all along but he had led his manservant to a location that God had designated and did something very specific there why is that important go to second chronicles chapter number three and verse number one go there second chronicles chapter number three and verse number one david was the king who was king after david solomon solomon was david's what son remember david wanted to build god a house where, where are my bible readers and god said no you're not going to build the house but your son is going to build the house are you still here he said because david you're a man of war a man of blood and the temple had to be built in rest there's a revelation there you can't build God a house fighting you build God's house in rest are y'all are y'all are y'all here when you enter into his rest now watch this second chronicles 3 verse 1 it says now Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem on Mount Moriah watch this where the Lord had a 
appeared to his father David at the place. Somebody say at the place. Say it again, at the place. Say it again, at the place. Watch this. At the place that David had prepared on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite, and he began to build on the second day of the second month in the fourth year of his reign. This is the foundation which Solomon laid for the building of the house of God. In other words, the very spot, the very location that David sacrificed was the place a generation later that God said, I'm going to build the house right here because somebody did something on this spot that made it a place I have chosen to dwell. Touch your neighbor and say, I don't know who dedicated this spot. I don't know who dedicated this location, but tell your neighbor, you and I are in a location that the Spirit of God has determined uh, to do very special things. There are angels assigned to this location. There are princes that are assigned to this region. There are seraphim and cherubim waiting to emanate from right here. And look at your neighbor and say, God put you and I right here, right now, in our generation, because he's getting ready to do something. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Woo. Lay your hand up on your neighbor. Say, I don't know who prayed over you. I don't know who dedicated you to the Lord. I don't know who said the devil couldn't have you. But God chose to land on you, and he's going to use you supernaturally in this next season tell them I don't know who I'm talking to lay your hand on yourself and say I am a place God has chosen to land put your foot down and say we are in a place that God has chosen to land I need you to understand what's about to happen in your life in your life and in this place is not about who I am or about who you are but God has chosen a place I need you to hear me I need you to hear me and the Lord was dealing with me but he said that's why I told you to call this a place a place of grace because I have chosen and then he took me I'll, I'll get back to it he took said I'll get back to it this Sunday in John chapter 5 you know the story the Bible says at that place that pool an angel went down to that place y'all aren't hearing me a certain time every year it was a debt y'all aren't hearing me he that has ears let him hear it was a designated location God said I want angels right there I want you to hear me. They're not coming and going now. They're staying here. Waiting for somebody to release them. See, y'all don't hear what I'm... See, the moment the blood of Jesus was shed, the angels had the right to no longer show up seasonally. Y'all aren't hearing me. They had to come and go until the planet was purchased back. The moment God got the planet back, angels don't have to come and go now. They can stay in the location they're designed. The reason they're not moving is because the church isn't speaking the word. Are you here? Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it tight. I need you to hear me. Because in these days, your and my assignment is to turn the angels loose. There's some stuff that's going to happen when they go to moving. And they hearken to the voice of the word of the Lord, which is why God told us, I want you to come here the first day of every month and loose your angels. I need you to hear me. I'm not here just praying. 
I'm loosing angels. You understand? I am releasing. And that's why, look at your nose, that's why we need to stay together. Because one can chase a thousand. But a couple of us can get 10,000 angels moving. Three or four of us in agreement. Y'all aren't hearing me. I got to hurry. So the Lord said, the Lord said, not, he said, ask, ask me, ask me for that anointing. Ask me for that dedication. I have chosen you to be the one to loose stuff. I've chosen you to be the company that releases angels in a region. Ask me for the anointing. We gonna ask tonight and we are going home with something supernatural. That's the first thing. Second thing, real quick, real, real quick, go to Ezekiel 33. Woo! I got to hurry with this. Ezekiel 33, verse number one. Now, the Spirit of God has been dealing with me about this heavily. And, and I, I've got tonight to get it over to you. I mean, I'll, I'll do some other things, I'm sure, on it as the Spirit of the Lord directs. But he, he said, you got to get this. You, you got to get this. We have to get this. There is a significant responsibility. Look at Ezekiel 33 and verse number one. Again, the word of the Lord came to me. Ezekiel is talking, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When I bring the sword up on a land and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Somebody say, Watchman. When he sees the sword coming up on the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet. Somebody say, he heard the sound. No, 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 no. I need you to talk loud. Say, he heard the sound. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he, meaning the person who is taken away, is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. Are you still here? So now watch this, get this. He said, the blood I will require at the watchman's hand. So the watchman has the responsibility, uh, has not, he, let me say it like this. The watchman has not the responsibility to save all, but to sound the alarm to all. See, the church's job is not to save everybody, but it is to sound the alarm to anybody who needs to hear. The problem right now is the church is too silent on issues she needs to be sounding the alarm about. Grab your neighbor's hand. Tell them your responsibility, my responsibility is not to save everybody. Salvation is God's job. Our job is to sound the alarm to everybody. Look at your other neighbor and say, it's not your responsibility to win everybody, but it is our responsibility to warn everybody. Are you there? This is the watchman's grace. This is the watchman's anointing. Look at verse number seven. So you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Now the explanation of a watchman again is in Ezekiel 3 and verse 7 where God, uh, 3, 3 and 17, where God says to Ezekiel, he said, I've made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Once again, this word watchman, it is the Hebrew word safa. It literally means, watch this, to lean forward, to peer into the distance. In other words, in other words, everybody lean forward. Just lean, 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 lean. Lean forward, lean forward. Now, if you're leaning forward, if somebody is sitting straight up, you are slightly ahead of them. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? See, see, the watchman's anointing is to be slightly ahead of everybody else. Come on, keep leaning forward. He says, so, so don't expect everybody to be in your position. 
keep leaning folks don't, don't expect everybody to look like you look at this say don't expect everybody to hear what you hear or see what you see or agree with what you say because you're a little ahead of most people are you that look you say you're you're a little tell them that don't get the big head about it don't don't get arrogant about it but no you're not gonna fit in with everybody because you're seeing what they're not seeing yet you're hearing what they're not hearing yet you're a little bit ahead for the purpose of warning and watching are y'all here Squeeze your neighbor's hand and tell them, stop trying to fit in and be normal. Just, just quit it. You have been made a watchman. The watchman's grace is on you. The watchman's anointing is on you. That's why you're up in the middle of the night. That's why when you see the news, you see something other people don't see. Are you there? He said, I've made you a watchman. It literally means, watch this, to lean forward and, and to observe, to look up and to keep watch and then he says therefore you shall hear a word at my mouth and give them warning from me and once again that word warning it doesn't just mean to scream it is the Hebrew word Zahar which means to enlighten lay your hand upon your brother lay your hand upon your sister and tell them God's gonna help you enlighten some people in these next several months to no, you're not gonna have to do much but when they leave you, the lights will be on. Uh, look at your neighbor. You're not going to have to scream and yell. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. But when you leave them, the light will be on. And, and they're going to be seeing something they didn't see before they met you. Touch two people and say, the grace, that grace is on you. Tell them it's coming on you greater even tonight. Are you still here? So the Lord said, ask me for the grace of the watchman. Ask me for the watchman's grace. I've told you before God has made this a watchman's house. He said some things to me on Sunday when the move of God was here a couple of weeks ago. He said there's certain things that are going to happen. And, uh, and, and they won't happen uh, unless you know about it. I want you to lay your hand upon your brother. Lay your hand upon your sister. Tell them there are certain things now that are going to happen. No, I need you to lay your hand. We're about to pray. Look at you and say, there are certain things that are going to happen now. In your family. Among your relatives. There are certain things that are going to happen in your region. In the place that you work. Certain things are going to take place on your block and around your community, but they won't happen without you knowing about it, without you participating in it. Look at your neighbor and say, there are some things that will not occur if you're not in on it. Don't worry, you're gonna miss anything. If you walk in this grace, you will miss nothing. Lay your hand, keep your hand on them. Keep your hand on them. We're about to go into prayer. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, let me tell you, let, let, let me tell you what the watchman's anointing is like. He said, remember when Sodom and Gomorrah was about to be destroyed? I said, yeah. He said, remember the angels that came walking toward me? I said, yeah. He said, you remember what I said? I said, yes, Lord. He said, I said, can I hide from Abraham? The th I, y'all aren't hearing me. Can I hide from Abraham the thing I'm about to do? In other words, God said, I will not hide it from the watchman. When I set a watchman in a family, in a region, in a location, in a city, in a circumstance, I won't hide what I'm doing. Lay your hand up on your brother. We're about to go into prayer. Lay your hand up on your sister. We're about to go into prayer. Tell them you will not be caught off guard. Tell them you're going to know stuff other people don't know. God's going to speak to you in the middle of the night. He's going to tell you, get up and pray about this. Before it hits, before it comes. It's been happening to some of you already. You need to understand what it is. It's the watchman's grace. 
You look at your neighbor and say, it's on you now. And it's increasing. Come on, get with me. Get in the posture of prayer. You can stand up. You can get on your knees. You can walk the floor. But we're going to agree on these things tonight. And we're going to release angelic help. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. If you're watching me live streaming, lift your hands, lift your voice, and begin to pray in the Spirit right now. It's already happening because the Word of the Lord has already ignited the move of the Spirit. Come on, open your mouth and pray. Come on, prayer warriors, wherever you are, whatever city you're in, whatever country you're in, whatever you're listening to me, open your mouth now. And if you pray in the Spirit, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, worship. Pray in the Spirit. If you don't pray in the Spirit, then lift your hands. Lift your voice and just begin to thank God. Just begin to worship Him. Come on, church. Come on, lift your voice. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We magnify you. We thank you and praise you tonight that you are the Lord God, strong and mighty. You are the Lord mighty in battle. You are our Father. We are your sons and your daughters in the earth. And tonight we take our place as sons. If you're the Father, then we are the sons. And you said in your word that as many as receive you, to them you gave power, right, and privilege to become the sons of God. We take our place tonight as sons and daughters of yours in the earth. And we bless you. And we magnify you. And we glorify you for the privilege, hallelujah, of worship. For the privilege of prayer. For the privilege of participation with you in the plans of the universe. Blessed be your name, O God, most high. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name in all the earth. High and lifted up are you, O God, our King. Come on, lift your voice. We bless you. Hey, we magnify you. That you are Jehovah to sue. You are the Lord our strength. And we worship you even tonight. That we are being strengthened with all might and power by your spirit in our inner man. We declare in this place that Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing is dwelling in our heart by faith. That even tonight we are being rooted and grounded in love that we might be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the width, to know the love of God. Pray in the Spirit. Lord, we declare, we believe the love that you have for us, and we receive the love that you have for us. And greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life, Jesus, you laid your life down for us that we might walk in this authority. And so in the name of Jesus, we bless you. Come on, lift your voice. Robo Sandele Baraba, Ebo Raka Sandele Mato, Holy Spirit, Ela Borayata, Holy Spirit, Ela Borandaraba, you are welcome here. God, we worship, we worship, hallelujah, we bless you, and we magnify you. 
You are Jehovah Shammah. You are the God who is present. You are the one who is here. And we acknowledge you, Spirit of the living God. As the Father and the Son are God, so you are God. Have your way. Come on, pray in the Spirit. God, you told us that we were to put you in remembrance of your word. And God, you spoke to your servant. And you said this was a season of dedication. A season and a year of dedication where literally we were to dedicate and to acknowledge that anointing of dedication upon our lives, upon ourselves, upon this house, upon your purpose. And so you said, Lord, ask me, ask me for that anointing. Ask me for that grace. So Father, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, as a people called by your name for such a time as this, God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would release your anointing of dedication upon us as vessels. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every person ordained unto salvation, ordained unto miracles, ordained unto revelation, ordained unto breakthrough, ordained under this season of dedication. I ask you for them from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, every son of yours, every daughter of yours, every individual chosen to participate in this time and in this season, in every nation, in every tribe, of every kindred, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, release that anointing. And in the name of Jesus, come on, in the earth, we release it. We declare in the name of Jesus, this is an hour of dedication. This is a place and we are dedicated. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Zeva riando raba esha, robo esanda la maka, robo eshande la maka, randa la barre ashundo, robo kande la masa. Era yes God, era borra baka. I speak in the name of Jesus to all the angels assigned to this purpose, to all the angels assigned to this people. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, to all of the angels assigned to this purpose of dedication, in the name of Jesus, we release your ministry. We release your ministry in the north. We release your ministry in the south. We release your ministry in the east. We release your ministry in the west. This is God's hour of dedication. This is God's hour of breakthrough. This is God's hour. Come on, press in right there. Pray in the Spirit. Yes, God. Yes, <laughs> God. God, every place that you have decided to land, every place you have decided to inhabit, every ministry, every city, every region, every country, every nation, every place, I need you to pray right now. Every place that you have decided to land and to move in the name of Jesus, we dedicate that place. Elaboraka. Pray in the name. Yes, God. Elaborakasha. Yes, God. Elaboraka. Yes, God. I see it. Pray in the spirit. I pray that in every one of those places 
one of your sons, one of your daughters catches your mind, hears the word at your mouth, and begin to declare it. I'm, don't stop. Yeah, I hear it. Awaken the watchman. Awaken the watchman. Awaken the watchman. Awaken the watchman. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice. Shout, awaken the watchman. Say it, Lord, awaken the watchman. Awaken them in the north. Awaken them in the ay ay ay. Awake, yay yay. Woo. Awaken them in the south. Awaken them in the east. Awaken them in the west. I call forth the sleeping prophets, the slumbering prophets. Rouse them from obscurity. Rouse them from inactivity. In the name of Jesus, Eboraka. Pray in the Spirit. I see it. I see it. I see fire falling from heaven. I see fire falling in cities. I see fire falling over churches. I see clouds of fire, pillars of fire rising over ministries. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Yes, God. Take it back. 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 We take cities back. We take regions back. We take churches back. We take ministries back. We take men and women of God. Satan, loose your hold of God's sons. Loose your hold on God's daughters. Pray in the Spirit. The dedicated places, <laughs> the consecrated places. Elabora yeska, ireka shonda lama, randa lama. Elabora la I see them rising like islands in the sea. Play in the spot. Erabokasa. Seboranda. Say it again. Make it a decree. Say awaken the watchman. Now say watchman rise. 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 Right. Rise in cities. Rise in regions. Ebarekata. People pray in the spirit, don't stop. said you give more grace <laughs> we ask for more grace <laughs> more grace more grace on the place <laughs> more grace on the place <laughs> more grace on the people more grace on your servants more grace on your apostles more grace on your prophets more grace on your evangelists right there the evangelists are rising. The evangelists are rising. More grace on the pastors. More grace on the teachers. 
more grace on the intercessors more grace on the musicians more grace on the worshipers more grace on the worship leaders pray in the spirit God we ask you for the grace of the watch we believe we receive lift your hands and say we believe we receive say it I believe I receive it and I shall walk in it in the name of Jesus say it again I believe I receive it and I shall walk in it this is how you do it lift your hands and bless the Lord God we receive Yeah, keep praying. Every and the Oh God, I see it, Lord. Every and the Lord. Yes, God. Come on, worship. Just worship, worship. Lift your hands up, lift your hands, lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them. Come on, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift them. Kemarian delevas. Come on, lift your hands up, lift them, lift them, lift them, lift them. Even at your seat, even in your living room, there in your bedroom, there. Oh! Hallelujah. God, we believe we receive. Lift those hands and bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands where you are. Lift them, lift them, lift them. Lift them. Mm. Come on, lift them, lift them, lift them. Lord, we we receive. And we declare that you shall perfect that which concerns us, your people. I need you to lift your hands. There, that's that anointing. Lift your hands. That's that anointing. Lift your hands. Lift them. I heard this I heard this while we were praying the Lord reminded me of it children I'm telling you 
there are places that God has purposed to do certain things for his own reasons for his own purposes and he is strategically placing people in places where he has purpose to do things there is movement happening in the realm of the spirit I heard this while we were praying and the Lord said remind the people you're going to see this it's in Amos chapter 4 and verse 7 he said I I also withheld rain from you he's talking to certain people when there were still three months to the harvest I'm in Amos chapter 4 and verse number 7 watch this watch what God says he said I made it rain in one city and I withheld rain from another city in other words God said I, there were places I I purposely released the rain and there are other places where I withheld it in other words it was supposed to be raining but it wasn't and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say he said tell the people you're gonna see it you're gonna see places now where there are tremendous outpourings of the Spirit of God and right down the street nothing is happening you're going to see places where God commands his blessing on households and families or businesses and enterprises and somebody in the same business that's been doing it longer goes broke because God is about to determine where it rains did you hear what I just said he said, I made it rain on one city and withheld rain from another city. One part was rained upon and where it did not rain, that part withered. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. In other words, God said, you're going to have to go where the water is. Do you understand? Do you understand? I want you to lift your hands. Father, I thank you for the witness of your spirit. And I thank you for granting us insight into what you have purposed and what you are doing in the earth. Lift your hands. Now, Father, I pray for every person connected to this moment and this anointing, wherever they may be, whoever they are, I pray that you grant them not just the knowledge but the assurance now that this grace is upon them and will not leave them. I need you to hear me. You have been chosen as a place where God has caused his name to abide. Did you hear what I said? I'm not talking about us just, as, I'm talking about you as an individual. And let me say it to you very clearly. Once God has chosen to land on you, there is no escape. There is no alternative. Jesus, my God. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 that's him. Once he has chosen that you're a place where he's caused his name to abide, individually, collectively, there are privileges and favors and perks that go with that but there are also greater responsibilities that go with it <laughs> you've got less latitude let me put it like this your leash is a little shorter I need you to lift your hands because the Spirit of the Lord just spoke to me to prophesy this. I declare in the name of Jesus that the angels of the Lord will so encamp around you that you will not be able to stray very far to the right or to the left you will be supernaturally restrained and the way will be made straight before you in the name of Jesus I need you to lift your hands because I have never prayed like this before but I have just been authorized I'm just going to tell you you can you can say what you want you can think what you want but when God puts his hand on you for good and he has purposed you there are things that simply are no longer able to touch you And I pray in Jesus name that that same grace that has stewarded my life will steward yours not flawless perfection but supernatural grace and protection I need you to hear me because this is being released upon you I'll never forget one day when I was reading in the scripture and I read where God said I will give you the sure mercies of David and I was reading that and the spirit of the Lord he said son pay attention I said what is it he said there are specific mercies I give to specific people for specific assignments are you there and he said there are mercies that I will put on certain lives that won't be on other lives but you can ask for them and I'll give them I want you to lift your hands say Lord grant me the sure mercies of David I ask for them uh, I believe I receive them now lay your hands upon yourself got to understand that there is great responsibility that comes with that but you also have to understand this and I need you to hear me God is going to do some things for you that are not fair lay your hands on yourself God is going to do some things for you in this season here that are not fair. 
He's going to favor you above some people that look in the natural more deserving, more worthy. You look at what King Saul did, you look at what David did, David's transgressions seem to be worse than Saul's. Saul is rejected and David never misses a day on the throne. Are you there? Now what does that what does that mean? It's for a purpose. It's for a reason. And here's what the spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you now. <laughs> You're going to have to get over survivor's remorse. I just heard that in the spirit. He said, you're going to have to get over survivor's remorse. You know what survivor's remorse is? It's when you keep looking in the back mirror and wondering, why me? Why was I spared? Why did I escape? Why was God, why did that happen? Why, 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 why was I the one in my family? Why, why me? Because God's got his hand on you and he is not going to be fair. He's going to give you the edge. He's going to give you the lead. And you need to humbly receive it. And walk in it. Lay your hands upon yourself. Boy, I had not planned on this. Lay your hands upon yourself. I understand it though, Lord. I see what you're doing. Thank you. Lay your hands on yourself. Yeah, you got to get over the survivor's remorse. You're the one who made it. You're the one who was spared. You're the one who was favored. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, survivors, survivors remorse, a, a, a plane crashes and one person lives and everybody else dies and they spend the rest of their lives guilty because they think, why me? You got to learn to take the favor of God and run with it understanding it's not because you're you it's because you're his and for some reason I don't know who I'm talking to and for some reason he has chosen to spare you keep you preserve you help you give you the extra in this season you've got to receive that and Humbly thank God for it. Don't let it make you arrogant, but know who you are. You are chosen. You are graced. You are unique. Lay your hands on yourself. I'm done. Father, I pray. Whew, I see. <laughs> Somebody shout grace, grace, grace 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 so that's why we were receiving grace and yelling grace remind your neighbor that's undeserved favor I'll tell your other neighbor you're about to receive walk in and experience some goodness from God that you could not earn it's coming on you because you belong to him. Clap your hands and bless the Lord. For you. Now I want every person under the sound of my voice, lay your hands on yourself, close your eyes. If you're watching me live streaming, I want you to get ready along with me to sow into this. The spirit of the Lord said to me, every time you lead this time of prayer I'm going to direct you to look 
into the camera and look at the people and say, I'm not going to tell you how many there are. There, one month there might be one. One month there might be 20. One month there might be two. One month there might be 12. But he said, I'm going to speak to people who are connecting to this anointing. And I'm going to speak to several of them once a month to sow a seed on this first day of the month of $1,000 into this anointing and into this purpose. Now that is not everybody. Last time we had several people do it. This time we'll have several. If there's one or if there's 100, my assignment is to stand here and say what God said. And there is an anointing that the Spirit of God has already released. Your seed is not going to get you the anointing. As a matter of fact, you're going to release the seed because you're already anointed. And the Spirit of the Lord has already confirmed something. Now those people every quarter, I'm going to minister to in a very specific assignment God has given to me in this prayer force operation that He's given to me to share. And once you do it, I'm going to send to you the information of when that call will be, when that Zoom call will be, so you can get out on it and share. And whether there's a thousand of you for that quarter, or if there's three of you, I'm going to speak what the Spirit of God tells me to do. No coercion, no manipulation. I have an assignment and I know the instructions I've been given. Now, everybody else under the sound of my voice, I want you to get a seed. If you're one of those that the Spirit of God this month is telling to sow that seed into the prayer force functionality, there are some things the Spirit of the Lord has directed us to do. I'm going to begin to unfold some of them in the month of February. You'll see what the assignment is. But I want you to connect with it right now. Everybody else, I want you to get a seat. And if you can get a seat of at least 70, 70, I want you to get it and I want you to sow it into the anointing. Those of you that are connecting with prayer force, and again, it doesn't, it, the thousand dollar seat is not to connect. You can connect whether you sow anything or, 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 or sow. So, you know, I want you to be a part of the prayer emphasis. But those that are sowing that seed every quarter, I'm going to share with you some things as the Spirit of the Lord has directed me to do. But if you're watching me live streaming and you want to connect to the prayer force right there at bishopmcclendon.com, you can do it. If you're here and you have not officially connected, you're attending, I want you to go ahead and fill out the information because I want to make sure that I can communicate with you the directives that the Spirit of the Lord gives us throughout this next 12 months. It's very important that you do. You know we've got an election coming up this year, right? And you know we need to be praying, right? Hello? Hello? There are other things that uh, you do know this, right? There are other things that we need to make sure that we're praying about. And I'm not going to tell you. Well, I'll tell you whatever the Lord tells me to tell you. Um, but uh, I want you to be alert. I want you to be connected. So right there at bishopmcclendon.com, do what you have to do. If you're making out a check, if you're sewing, if you're watching me live streaming, right there on your computer screen, right there on your smartphone, there's a way for you to sew. I want you to sew as God directs you. If you're one of those that are sowing the thousand, do it. Let me know it. If you're not, whatever seed you're giving. Somebody says, well, what if I don't have a $70 seed? You give the very best you can. The Bible says, if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted. Somebody say, it is accepted. Not according to what a man has, not but according to what he has. So right there on your computer screen, your smartphone, there's a way for you to do it. Or you can text give, C-E-M-M, to 41444. Just follow the prompts and give as the Spirit of God directs you. There's a number on your screen, 310-323-2600. Many of you need to call that number and connect with the prayer force right now. Just give me your name and information so we can start communicating with you and sow the seed, whatever the Spirit of God is directing you to do. 310-323-2600. Do it now. If you've got the Bishop McClendon app, you can give that way. If you don't have it, download it tonight. Go to uh, iTunes or go to Google and download it. It'll help us stay connected and help us in some very strategic ways. Now, if you're here in the tabernacle and you are sewing, if you're making out a check, you know to make it payable to CEMM. If you're giving cash, please, please use the envelope. I already see some people moving in the aisles. If you want to do it on a bank card or credit card, just get up and uh, 
my dear people there will help and assist you with that transaction but whatever you do do it in faith do it believing and let's agree how many of you do remember that God has promised a harvest on the seed you sow let me see let me see let me see let me see now see because God has promised it I don't miss an opportunity to declare his word when I sow amen so if you're giving if you're sowing if you have sown if you're getting ready to sow uh, I want you to lift your hands right now just stop what you're doing even if you haven't finished I believe you will finish but I want you to say this out loud say Lord I receive and I walk in the grace that you have released on my life in this moment and with this seed I declare in the name of Jesus favor finance and things being added to me are my harvest I boldly confess I lack nothing I have need of as I believe and act on your word in Jesus name it is so amen let's worship the Lord let's worship him in our giving come on you to pray with me I'll, I'll let you know for sure on Sunday morning but as I was with the Lord the last 24 hours or so and this morning more specifically he gave me something that was just uh, it was a culmination literally of about 20 years of revelation and this this consecration ended uh, something and the download has already begun some of you that have been walking with this us in this anointing for years you will recognize it and so I'm praying about it I don't want to be impulsive I want to do what God says do uh, so I'll let you know specifically on Sunday but it very well may be on Wednesday of next week Wednesday night I'm going to invite you to a very special anointing service where I'm to lay my hands and anoint with oil every person in 
the building, there has been something released uh, in the spirit and this consecration caused some things to be pulled down, to be received. And the Lord shared some things with me. I'm going to share it with you, um, uh, but I'm just, I'm, I'm praying about whether I'm to do that. So I'll let you know on Sunday. So if I am led of the Lord to do it, uh, I'll do it. So how many of you will agree with me that I get clear instructions? Let me see. I don't, I don't want to do anything just to do it. But if there's something I'm to release, then I want to make sure I do. And I think I'm supposed to, but I just, shh, don't say it. Don't say it. Okay, lift your hands. Lift them. Lift them. Were you blessed tonight? Thank you. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for sharing with us. Father, in the name of Jesus now, we pray a hedge of protection in the north, the south, the east, and the west around this people, their households, their goods, and all they have on every side. We declare in the name of Jesus that the angels of the Lord encamp round about us. We decree that everything our hand touched prosper and we continue to increase in the land which you give. Say it out loud with me. Say the angels of the Lord encamp round about me and they deliver me for I am one who fears the Lord in Jesus name hug your neighbor and tell him I love you God bless you we'll see you by his grace at the place of grace on Sunday vision month begins it's going to be powerful good night